Hi, I'm Elizabeth with Elizabeth Road Studio. I'm so excited to show you how to make beautiful art using one of my maker's kits. Let's get started. Um, you'll have a packing list with instructions on the back. So if you don't want to watch the videos, you can just follow the instructions. They're very simple. Um, you'll have in the yellow rose kit, you'll have enough glass to make a couple of yellow roses or more. You'll have um, your stuff for your foliage, which is like your little leaves and um, different decorative greens for inside the roses. Then we'll have a little tub of sprinkles, gloves, a sticker as promised, um, paints, lots of paint with this kit, your art resin packet, beloved art resin packet. This is what we've been waiting on, girls. A paintbrush, glue pen, and a piece of wood lovingly cut by my husband. So I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it so that if people are watching this on replay, they don't have to listen to me talk and talk and talk, right? Okay, so to start out with, we're going to just kind of unpack everything. And the first thing you need to do is to paint your wood white. So move some stuff out of the way get my white paint out and I'm just gonna well you need to figure out which side of the board you want to use this side of the board um, has kind of a roughed up edge and that's the one that I recommend using the other side is really smooth and doesn't have much interest or texture to it but this side with kind of the rougher edge is just gonna look a little bit better whenever it's all finished. So I'm gonna squirt out some paint on here. And I like to keep my painting kind of um, a rough paint. I don't like to fill it in solid, but that's just a personal preference. You can do this however you want. Some people like to just make it really a solid white color and that's fine too. I just like mine to look a little more rustic than that. I'm gonna get in there and get those nail holes. I find that if I don't like put a, you know, dig a little bit of paint down in those nail holes, push a little down in there, that they just kind of stand out in the composition and that's not what I want. I don't want the nail holes to stand out necessarily. I want the artwork to stand out. And you can also paint your sides too. If it's, you know, if you're not gonna make a frame for this, which I assume most of you all will not, um, Painting the sides just gives it kind of a finished look, more finished look. And again, I just do this really quickly. Don't spend too much time on this. You want it to look kind of rustic and um, not a solid white coat. Okay. And you could put another coat on that if you want to, but I kind of like to leave mine like this. So. We're gonna leave it like that. I'm not gonna rinse out my brush, but I'm gonna use this brush again. So <clears throat> when you're doing the roses, um, you might wanna have something to, I'm gonna take the top off of this. This is what you can use to pour your paint into, okay? Um, Cause you won't need that top again. So when you're doing roses, um, I want you to start by painting some roses first. And I know that sounds so intimidating if you've never painted before, but it's really, really simple. So you have enough glass to make probably three roses and you just kind of want to lay out where you want them to be in your mind. So I'm going to say one rose here, one here, and maybe one right here, just kind of a cluster of three roses. And then I can have some rose buds in some other places. So while I'm thinking about that, I, I've got a, you know, one of them's gonna be a little bit bigger and then one smaller and one a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to draw circles, not perfect circles. I'm just gonna draw circles where I think those roses should go. Maybe this one is that big. This one just going to draw some circles, concentric, not even perfect, not perfect at all. Concentric circles, kind of where I want those roses to be. Okay, 
And then I'm gonna put a bud, a couple of little rose buds around, and that's it. That's all you have to do, okay? So that's all the painting you're gonna do with your yellow. So I'm gonna put the top back on this. I know it seems like a huge waste, but you'll use this yellow paint for something else later on, somewhere down the road. Promise me you'll do that. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take my green paint, pour a little on my top here, and I'm gonna use the same brush, and I wanna make a few leaves, some foliage. I know that in this kit I have included enough for each person, for each kit, um, to be able to make some long, I'll, sh I'll just show you. It's easier for me to show you than it is for me to tell you, right? So if you wanna make some pieces like this, I have included tiny pieces for you to do that with. So let's see here. I didn't rinse out my brush because it doesn't bother me if there's um, a little bit of yellow in there. If I were doing, when I do the pink and green one, I'd probably rinse out the brush. I'm just gonna put some green around here. But this type of um, foliage, you just use the edge of the brush like this, the edge of the brush like this, and that's how you get that shape. Stand the brush on end and then push in with the corner. Okay. I'm going to add a few more green things and I'll show you how this is going to come together. Okay, so you're finished with your brush then. You can put that in water or toss it if you don't want to reuse it, whatever you want to do. Okay, so now I want to get out my yellow glass. There was so much um, that we needed for the roses that it's in two bags and they're stapled together. So you can just pull that apart and open them up. I like to look and see what all I have. So I'm gonna lay out everything onto my plastic. I do wanna make sure that you cover your surface with plastic first. I probably should have mentioned that in the beginning, but make sure you cover your surface with plastic. I'm gonna dump all this out. I'm gonna put on gloves just to be safe. The glass will still cut through the gloves, don't, don't be fooled, but um, it'll just give you a little bit of a layer of protection. You just don't wanna poke yourself with it because this glass is very sharp. Okay, so I've laid out all my glass. I'm gonna move it up here so y'all can see it a little better. Laid out all my glass and what, I wanna, what I'm looking for are the, are the pieces that are smaller. So I don't wanna start with this one because it's a larger piece. I'm looking for ones that have a sharper curve. So maybe this one, I wanna put it in the center like that and hook them together so that I can give the illusion that this rose is growing in a circular pattern. So you just kind of hook them together like that. You can wait for your uh, paint to dry if you want to. I'm obviously not doing that, but I'm not usually a very patient person, so. <laughs> so all the little ones I wanna use for the centers. So I'm gonna go ahead and divvy them up so that I can use these little bitty ones for the centers. See, I got paint on my glass there because I didn't let it dry, which is okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's just not ideal. So I'm just gonna keep building around that center, hooking the glass pieces together, let me see, like this. You see how I'm doing that? Hooking them together like that? Okay, let me do the other little one over here with the pieces that are smaller for the center. You're making this just like a rose grows. The tighter, smaller pieces are in the middle, and it gets bigger as it goes out. Now all of this glass is hand cut, so it's all gonna be a little bit different, but 
but I promise you it will work. It will work. They will all work. And like on this one where I have that gap there, I can drop in another tiny piece to fill in that space. You just keep building out like this. See how they lock in together? Because they're all cut in a circular pattern. Now, I'm not following the lines that I painted on there. I'm just, um, I'm not, I'm not following any of those lines I painted. And that's, that's the way you want to do it. it. It just makes it, gives it a little more depth, makes it look a little more realistic. You can just keep going. Like this one here, this one's a little bit tighter, so I'm going to fit it down inside here. Remember, these are sharp. These are not ground down at all. So just use caution. Don't poke yourself with it. <laughs> Hi, Sandy. Hi, Deborah. Look at all those names over there. Familiar names. I'm glad y'all are joining me. Yes, this is a surprise because I needed to shoot these videos anyway, and I thought, well, I'll just do it live. Makes it more fun for me. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna have lots of glass left over, but I'm gonna use some of these little pieces to make my buds, these little flower buds. And they don't have to be the same size. That one doesn't, okay, so here's another trick. Sometimes when I lay my piece of glass down, it just wants to fall over. It doesn't want to stay where I want to leave it. So turn it over to the other side and it might want to stay that direction. So the glass will tell you what it wants to do. Honestly, it really does. Any of you all that have made glass art before know that. It kind of tells you what it wants to do. And I don't have to put a piece of glass on every single place that I've painted. I can leave some of them off, like I wouldn't have to put one over here, but I did. I mean, you don't have to, but you can. I'm gonna fill in some of these little places here. Keep filling. Another good trick is if you wanna see how your composition looks, is to take a picture from above with your phone. Hold your camera up like this and take a picture. Um, it just helps you see a little better than if you're looking at it like this. If you can look at it from above or stand up and look at it that way. But honestly, taking a picture um, really makes a huge difference. Um, you're seeing it 2D, you're seeing it um, kind of in a different light. To me, it makes a big difference. I'm just gonna keep adding these because I feel like See, like this one, it can lay like this one can lay like that. But if I turn it this way, it's turn it on the other side, it's not going to stay up like that. Now, you can always use your glue pen as well if you want to hold something in a certain position. But um, honestly, I don't think I need it at all. And just remember, if you use glue or paint, which you will be using paint, but if you use glue too, you have to let these dry before you can pour resin. I'm smiling because I just saw Linda's, <laughs> Linda's advice, but don't drop your phone. <laughs> we speak from experience, both of us do. <laughs> don't drop your phone on it. So you have plenty of glass to do this whole board. Um, I have these pieces left over, but I could have done this a little bit thinner if I wanted to. Okay, then the next thing I'm gonna do is dump out all my green glass. Because I kind of like to see what I have before I start making stuff with it. Okay, it's gonna be tricky because I'm wearing gloves. I don't usually work wearing gloves because I'm crazy like that. But you will have in your kit, let me move this stuff up. You will have in your kit little bitty pieces like this. These little bitty. <laughs> Jane, you've been working on your flowers today. 
these little bitty pieces like this and they're kind of all different colors and whatever you can sort through here if you want to and you know kind of match them up but I think it's way more interesting if you if you mix them up let's see just makes a more interesting uh, composition if you'll place them randomly and not worry too much about having them all match. You could do them all on one side. You could do them, you know, you could put these little um, petals, these little leaves, other places um, that aren't painted underneath, you know, make up your own as you go. And you don't have to use them at all if you don't, whoop, if you don't want to. This is hard to do with gloves on, I'm not gonna lie. Whoop. Use the back of a paintbrush. I use tweezers sometimes to do things like this. So you get them where I want them. I don't fuss with it too much, but okay. Y'all see where I'm going with this? Okay, I still have several of these little pieces left, but you know, I don't have to use them all. These little bitty ones. Okay, now I want to put some leaves in here. I'm going to put them on top of ones that are um, painted, but I could put them next to it like this. They don't have to be right on top of it. Look at that one's got some good texture. They should all have some pieces in them that are a little bit different, a little bit different texture. Let's see, I like to tuck foliage in everywhere. And they don't have to lay flat. They can be, this one's propped up on that yellow, on that yellow piece right there, on that rose piece. Um, they can be, they can be set on top of each other. Um, that's the beauty of resin and glass art is that it doesn't have to be um, flat like a mosaic. It can be layered and um, dimensional like that. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I've got a few of these pieces left, but I don't, I don't think I'm gonna use them all. You should have extra pieces, so um, you can use them all if you want to. Maybe I'll put this one in there, but you don't have to. And they'll all be a little bit different. They're all gonna be a little bit different because I got glass everywhere I could, which is the beauty of this kind of art, in my opinion. And you can get really creative with this. You could add stuff to it if you wanted to. If you had like a piece of a broken candy dish or an old piece of china, or if you had like a, a bumblebee brooch or something that belonged to your grandmother or a little pin that's a bug or something, it would be really cute to add to this and really customize this design the way you want it. Okay. So now we have this container that had, you know, I used the lid of it to put my paint in it. So this was in here. So these have, I'm gonna dump this out as well. There's all kinds of little um, bits and baubles and things in here. You can split this out. These little flat, um, what do I call these drops? These little flat, they're plastic actually, but when you uh, pour resin on them, they look like glass. Then we also have these little green, uh, little green glass pebbles and some mirrored pieces. So I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle some of this around. Again, you don't have to use this if you don't want to, but it does add another layer of texture and dimension. I don't wanna get it down in between my rose petals but um, around this outside where the board is, I think that that's a pretty addition to that. Look, I got one down in there and I have to dig that out. Can y'all see that? This is when tweezers come in handy. Actually, I think I'll just sweep it out. Here we go. So this is going to be what the yellow one looks like. This particular design 
is available in yellow, pink, and red, and they'll be on the website in the morning. Okay, so thank you, Angela. Thank you, Deborah. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is take your little cup, so you've got four of these cups, and one of them was filled with this little mixture, but you've got four of these little cups, and we're gonna set this up and make like a table for this to set on. You could have done this ahead, you know, in the beginning, but I usually wait until it's all designed and then set it up. But if you're worried you're gonna knock something over, you can always do that at the onset. Okay. Move the paint out of the way. So in your uh, kit, you'll have a packet of art resin. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour this resin so that you can see what that looks like. I'm gonna sweep this stuff out of the way. Sometimes I use a paintbrush as my broom. Sweep all this stuff out of the way because I save all this because I'm always doing projects where I need little bits and pieces like my derby, the Kentucky Derby pieces that I do. I use these little bitty bits for the crowd, the people in the background that are watching the race. I use little bits for everything. So I have a whole bin of what I call confetti. It's glass confetti. And that's what I use for stuff like that. Okay, so you'll need to open this top, which I did not get my scissors out. Open this packet, make sure not to cut through the resin packet that's inside. So just cut the edge of that. And this is something that um, kids can help you do too. Just be really careful with the broken glass, okay? This is the information packet with everything that you need to know. Um, you wanna do this in a place that you can leave it for at least 12 hours to let it dry undisturbed. You could put a cardboard box over the top of it if you wanted to put something to cover it or a plastic uh, shoe box or something like that, a plastic tote. But I just put mine in a room where nobody's gonna be in it. I mean, I'm in my studio, but if I were doing this downstairs, I'd probably put it in the dining room or somewhere like that. But you wanna keep the plastic underneath it. So you can move this after you've built it, but after you pour resin, you're gonna have to leave it there for 12 hours, okay? So um, this is your safety information, and then this is the resin. One side is a hardener and one side is the resin. And what you'll do is slide this plastic clip out just like that. And then you'll have a rod, remove that. And then this one bag, these two parts will mix together, okay? So you'll need to mix this for three minutes. Set a timer for three minutes. Don't do it any less than three minutes. Mix these two parts together thoroughly, but at least for three minutes. And you'll see they get a little bit cloudy. And at the end of three minutes, it'll get clear again. This puts a few bubbles in it, but it's not bad. And they'll pop as the resin dries. Okay. So we're gonna stir, we're gonna mix this for three minutes. Talk amongst yourselves. Do y'all have any questions about the roses or about um, these kits at all? They're going to be $49 with free shipping and they'll be available tomorrow morning on the website, Friday morning on the website at 9 a.m. So you'll have um, four options, five options. Yellow roses, pink roses, red roses. Here is the pink, nice pretty bright pink. Here is the red. You'll have a pineapple option and a rainbow option. So, we are, um, I was thankful that that art resin came today and we were able to get them all packed up. They will ship next week. And there'll be priority mail shipping, so anywhere in the US it'll take less than three days. These make great gifts and great gifts to send people to. There'll be a shipping address on there if you want it sent to somebody besides yourself. Be a fun thing to receive in the mail. All right, we have about a minute and a half left. I'm watching my time up here. 
you can um, run this along the side of your um, table or just keep mixing like I'm doing. There'll be enough resin in here for this one project. And the same with the other ones, the pineapple and the, um, the pineapple and the rainbow won't be enough to do this one board. <laughs> oh, thank you, Brenda. It is easy. It is easy. I mean, the glass is already cut for you. We hand cut all of this glass. <laughs> Needless to say, my hand's a little cramped up, but it's all right. I had some help. Had some good help. Okay. Almost time, 10 more seconds. And I usually actually, um, what is the size of the board? Let me measure it. They're all the same size and they're, let's see, nine by five. It's kind of an odd size, but I made it as big as I possibly could, um, made it as big as I possibly could to still fit in the box so that I could ship them priority mail. Let's see, five inches by nine inches. When you mix the resin in a cup with a tongue depressor, how do you keep from getting the small bubbles? I mix so slowly. It's almost funny looking. I mix just real slow. It's really slow. And that's how you keep from getting micro bubbles. You won't get that many in here because there's no extra air. You can only get so many because of the air that's in it. But um, yeah, you just have to mix really slow when you're mixing in a cup with a stick, really slow. Especially the smaller the cup, the slower you have to mix. It's almost, yeah, it's almost comical looking. Oh, thank you, Laura. That is a great gift for older grandkids. You're exactly right. You're exactly right, or for a friend, for anybody, really. Okay, our time is up. So you need to snip the corner of this very, very small corner right here. Just a tiny, tiny edge off, because you're gonna need to drizzle this over all of this glass, okay? So I mean, tiny, let's see if I can get focus in on this. Do you see how tiny I snipped there? I mean, the actual corner right there, okay? So when you drizzle this out, it'll be about the size of a skewer, like small. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my roses. It really doesn't matter where you start because this whole board's gotta be covered, but you definitely wanna cover the top of all of these little ridges that are sticking up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go over these ridges. This part you've got to be a little bit patient because um, it does take a little while, but it's therapeutic. I love watching this pour. It's about the consistency of corn syrup, um, and temperature does make a difference. I need to tell you that too. If you're in a really cold climate, um, let's say less than 50 degrees, it's gonna take longer to um, it's going to take longer to set up, but if you're in Kentucky or Texas or California, you'll be just fine. If it's super, super hot, it's going to set up a whole lot faster. Um, but I do this indoors, so you all should all be about, if you're like me, we're on 68 degrees right now. <laughs> I like it cold. <laughs> I like it cold inside the house. People come to visit me, they know to bring sweatshirts and hoodies and long pants, <laughs> even in summer. All right, so we're gonna go around all these little pieces here. Move my hand out of the way so y'all can see what I'm doing. Just going around all the glass. It's gonna drizzle down and, and definitely uh, hold it to the board. The resin is what holds it there, but um, you want to get all these pokey up pieces covered in resin too. Is that a word, pokey up pieces? I don't know, but you know what I mean. So we're gonna go around all of these, and then you're gonna go over each of your 
greens. Woo! Lost a piece. I'm gonna go over everything on here, okay? You're gonna have just enough resin to cover this board. Usually the more, um, you know, obviously the more surface area you have, the more resin you need, but um, you'll have just enough to go over all of this, but none extra. You probably won't have any extra, honestly. It's a two ounce pack. Try to make the most of it. You have about 20 minutes of working time. Um, if you see something that's not right, you know, definitely wear your gloves and move it around if you want to. You'll have about 20 minutes of open time um, before it starts to set up. So if you mix the resin and you've got to do something else, but you don't ever want to mix the resin and just leave it. <laughs> that has happened on my ornament kits before. I had somebody call me and say, oh, I did something really dumb. We mixed the resin and then we went to a movie. I said, well, why'd you do that? <laughs> so we had to send out some new packets, but look, I had just enough. You saw how carefully I did that. So you're not going to have any extra. Hi from South Dakota. Thank you, Christine. Okay. Now any residual resin is gonna drip down over the side and land on your plastic underneath, and that is just fine. Let's see, not gonna hurt a thing. Um, and then tomorrow, or in about 12 hours, you're gonna come back to this and lift this off the cups. The cups probably won't even stick because there's not enough resin to like drain down over it. Um, you'll lift up the cups and Pull the lift this up off the cups and it'll be completely dry and ready to go so don't forget to sign your artwork and um, you can put a hanger on the back this could be a little shelf sitter um, this would be a great uh, gift for a birthday anything so anyway there you go there you have it so I'm gonna do the pineapple next and then um, so I'll show you the pineapple now all right so I'm gonna scoot this one out of the way and let's see, probably not my smartest move yet, but let's see if I can do this and not make a mess. Okay, don't do what I did. <laughs> okay, so for the pineapple, let me grab another board here. Um, okay, so remember you wanna use the top you want to use the side that has the roughed up edge. So that's what I'm using. The other side of your board is really slick and smooth. So I wouldn't recommend using that side of the board necessarily. Let me see if I can scoot this off a little bit more off camera. Okay, so you're going to, the pineapple's gonna go this way, right? So I'm gonna go ahead with my white paint. Let's see if I can clean off this other brush just so I don't have to use another one. To show you so you'll have a sponge brush and you'll just kind of paint your background however you want it. it can be a rough cover it can be really smooth and solid white whatever you want to do you'll have plenty of white paint to do that hi Kathy so glad y'all are joining me today all right and again, you'll want to paint your sides. If you're not framing this, which I assume most of you won't be, um, you could make your own little frame for it. I may do that as like a little bonus class just to show you what that would look like. Um, they do look cute framed, especially if you're going to use it for a shelf sitter. They look really cute, you know, like on a bookcase or something. Okay, so you want to let that dry. And we're going to be using some glue for this one. Um, I'm going to draw out my pineapple with my glue. And so um, this glue pen is so nice to be able to use with that because you can draw something and it will draw clear. And then when you pour resin over the top of it, it's like it never was there, right? So um, hi, everybody. Okay, so usually pineapples 
the crown on the pineapple starts about midway. So I'm going to find kind of halfway and I'm just gonna draw an oval. And then this top, this half will be for my crown. So I want it to be a big fat pineapple. And whatever glue you use, just remember you have to make sure that it is dry before you pour resin on it. Hi there, hi from Alabama, thank you. Okay, so your pineapple glass is all in one bag. We're doing all yellow things today. I'm just gonna dump it out. You're gonna have way more than you need, way more than you need. And I'm gonna first build the outside of my pineapple. So I'm gonna look at my pieces and see how they lay and kind of line up that edge. I'm gonna line up that edge with the edge of my glue line to make a smooth edge for my pineapple. This part's a little bit tedious, but after this part's done, we get to go crazy with the inside. So I kind of figure out which way the glass is gonna lay by kind of just laying it down and looking at it. And then I can lay down the edge around the pineapple. I could make this pineapple smaller, I could make it bigger, probably not too much bigger, but you do however you want to do it. See that one, I moved that one out of the way because when I laid it down it didn't have a nice edge to it. Right now I'm just working on the edge here. Let's see. Again, another way to check it is to look at it from above. Okay, Whoop, I'm gonna run into my other piece over there. So this one's a little off, but now we can just fill in the inside. If you wanna make a pattern, you can. If you wanna, I don't know, it's up to you, whatever you wanna do. If you have other glass you wanna add to it, you can do that. We'll just fill in the inside. Some of these pieces are big. You can pile it up. I think the thicker, more piled up, the better. That's my opinion. And you can pile it up as much as you want. The resin will hold it all on there. No need to worry about that at all. Keep piling on here. For all different shapes. Let's see. Okay, we can keep going if we want to. You can make it as thick as you want, as flat as you want. But again, the beauty of using resin is that it will just drain down in between there and hold all this stuff together. So you don't have to make it like a mosaic. This is probably an inch tall right now, which is the way I like it. I like it really thick and tall and chunky. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the crown. Let me get out the glass for the crown. So it's all in one bag as well. And these are long, um, triangular pieces and they're different glass so they'll all be a little bit different color but what you want to do is imagine the pineapple crown so you want it to come out from the bottom and out like this and I'll draw it with a with a um, glue pen just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about but you want it to come out like this like this just like a pineapple crown Okay, can y'all see that a little bit? <laughs> okay, so we'll start with our pieces here and we're just going to make the wider side in toward the center and the pointy side out. So the wider side in toward the center and the pointy side out. And you'll have plenty of glass to do this. Water side in and the pointy side out all over the top up here. Now 
Now, if I made this a little bit smaller, which you certainly can, you would have room to paint something on it, like welcome or um, our home or your name or whatever you'd want on there. So um, you could definitely make it smaller and you'd have room for stuff like that. But I went ahead and filled up the board Let's see, I can see gaps. I, I'm not above it, so it's hard for me to see unless I look at the camera. <laughs> I look in the camera, then I can see it. But you'll be able to see it at home. And again, take a picture of it. Um, whatever you want to do so that you can get a good idea for any gaps or any places that you need to fill in. This one right here is a little crazy. Let's see. some more of these in here. I like it to be really thick and to really stand up off the page and off the board and um, here we go. So there's your pineapple. You'll have lots of glass left over for this one. Lots and lots of glass left over. Okay, so you can do the same thing. Lift this up on the cups and pour resin on it and it will be good to go in about 12 hours. Same deal with the pineapple. Okay, let me move this out of the way and I'm gonna show you the pink rose. Where do you find this? Where do you get this kind of glass? I get this glass all different places. I mean, you name it. I find glass there everywhere, everywhere. Um, consignment stores, thrift sales, uh, yard sales, the Dollar Tree, uh, let me think, estate sales, uh, nursing homes. Nursing homes always have, um, they always have, uh, what's the word, vases and stuff they're trying to get rid of uh, because, you know, people don't take them home with them once the flowers are gone. So you just have to ask around and um, people usually are very willing to get rid of uh, glass collections like this. Okay, I am getting some paint out of my brush here and we're gonna make a pink rose. So again, you just want to paint your board. The only difference with the pink rose is that um, you're going to mix some paint. And I'll show you that here in just a second. You can order a kit on my website tomorrow morning. They go live at 9 a.m. And there will be so many options. Let's see, you'll have pink roses, red roses, yellow roses, a pineapple, and a rainbow. So we'll have all those options in the kit. And free shipping. They're $49 with free shipping. Okay, so I've got my paint on here, and then I've got my pink glass, which is a nice bright pink, and I've got pink paint, which is a nice bright pink. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I've got my little crushed uh, bits and bobbles. I'm gonna take the top off and use the top to mix my paint. I want to mix my pink and white together just to soften this color just a little bit. So I put a little bit of pink on my tray and I'm gonna put a little bit of white on my tray. And then my brush, actually I'm gonna grab this brush because that one it's turning yellow from all my yellow paint. Okay, I'm gonna grab my brush and I'm just gonna mix a little bit of this pink and white together just to soften it up a little bit because I think it'll give it a little more dimension if it's a softer color to go with the really bright glass. Yes, I cut the glass myself. Oh yeah. Okay, so remember we're gonna do a rose. I'm gonna set up this composition a little bit different. I'm gonna do one big rose right here in the middle. A little bit different than the other one. 
I'm just going to do some concentric circles like that. Okay, then a small one over here and a small one over here and some rosebuds here and here. So this will be a board of pink roses. Okay, then that's about all the paint that I used. Then I have my green paint. Same thing, squirt some into here. I don't mind that I've got that dirty. It doesn't bother me. It's not gonna hurt anything. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Ah. Y'all will be able to do this quicker at home. <laughs> I promise. Rinse out my brush and come in here with my green paint. And I wanna do the same thing I did on the yellow one. And I'm gonna make a stem that's like that. I think that's I think that's really pretty. I like that style of foliage. So we'll do another one over here. Make a long stem and then put some more green here and there. And it's okay if the green is not going to get completely covered by glass like in the last one super super pretty just to have some of the green without glass over it and pretty to have some of the glass without green under it but it kind of gives you a little bit of more dimension so um, I'm going to open up these two pink glass bags Let's slide this back so you can see when I open these um, I'm going to dump them out so that we can grab the pieces that are smaller for the center of the roses. So all of these are cut on the curve. We cut them all so that they are, um, they can make a concentric circle. And I'm gonna take the smaller pieces and use those for the very center of the rows. Okay, so I'm gonna hook them together like this. And I'll go back and look at your all's questions when I'm finished and answer them. I can't, um, they're coming. Hold on. I'll go back and look at them when I'm, if I'm finished. Okay, so you want to hook these together so that it looks like the center of a rose. You see how that works? I'm going to find some other smaller ones to do these other two roses, to do the centers of these other two roses. This one, this little piece right here makes a good rosebud. So does this one. Okay, so right here we've got the center. We're hooking them together like this. And then doing the next one and the next one and the next one. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going with this. Let's see, maybe this and this makes more sense. I don't know what um, what kind of design we would call that besides concentric circles? Any idea? Okay, we're going to hook these together. They're kind of like a yin and yang symbol in the beginning. And then I've got my three roses started there. Keep going. I don't know if I like that one there. See how sometimes they fall over? So if they're doing that, just kind of play into it. Like, flip it over the other way. Glass really tells you what it wants to do. <laughs> we think we have control over things and we really don't. That's a good piece for there. Whoa. Y'all, I promise I usually don't work with gloves on, so this is tricky for me. But I'm trying to set a good example for the attorney. <laughs> For, for my insurance. I'm trying to set a good example. Okay. I'm going to go through here and keep adding to these roses. Thank you. Thank you, Lana. All right. More over here. 
just kind of hook your pieces in there together. It's amazing how quickly they come together and turn into roses. Amazing, really. Put that one up there. You're going to have lots of small pieces. So you just kind of have to fit them in. But you'll have plenty of bigger pieces too. I don't know. We used um, one whole vase for each kit. So that one does better on its side. See, like when you set a piece down, I'm going to show you with this one. That one works that way. This way, it, it leans in a little bit. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. But when you're playing with it, you'll see, okay, do I want it to stand up? Or do I want to flip it over and have it kind of lean in so you can see more of the pink? I'm going to let this one kind of lean in and just hug that piece next to it. Keep building these out until I get the size that I want. And I'm not paying any attention to those circles that I drew before. They're just giving me some visual depth here. Um, they're not really doing anything besides that. They're just adding a little bit of depth. So I don't want you to get hung up on how you draw those circles, how you paint them, because it really doesn't matter. You're covering them up anyway. It just gives you a little bit of interest. Makes them more interesting to look at. These are almost looking like peonies. There's so many ruffles to these flowers. I love peonies. These are supposed to be roses, but I do love the way this is coming together. So, just keep going, keep building, keep, I think I like this one over here better. There we go. And the fun thing about this is they're all going to be different. So, if you, um, if you order two or three of them, you're going to have a different a different look each time so um, or if you order several to do with your family friends everybody seeing their friends these days that one's got some paint on it I got paint on that you paint on it you can just wipe it off keep going around keep knocking stuff over because of my gloves. If you find yourself knocking stuff over, you can always use some of your glue, but you don't want your glue, you don't want to put so much glue on it that you have to wait forever for it to dry because you've got to have everything dry before you can, um, I'll use some of these bigger pieces out here, before you can pour resin on it. So, um, and if you're like me, if it's just sitting around without any resin on it, something's gonna get knocked over. So I usually like to pour resin as soon as I can. <laughs> I mean, I wait for it to dry, but then, you know, I like to pour it as soon as I can. I think they look like peonies too, Lana, but that's okay, that doesn't bother me. I think it's because of the glass. Um, it has that ruffle quality to it. Maybe I should rename them, I don't know. I think you could interpret them as roses too. There are some roses that have this look to them, but I can't remember what they're called. Double roses, is that what they're called? Double roses? I don't know, somebody that knows more about flowers probably could tell me. Okay, let's see here. Now, you can hold a camera up above it to see if you have any gaps, um, you know, any places you need to add more glass. If you need to, you can always just drop it down in there like I did that one. Let's see. I feel like I need a piece right in here. Maybe I'll... It's like a puzzle. It's like a puzzle, except it all does fit. Like right in here, is that where I need it? There we go. Maybe one over here. Maybe one right here. That. Oh, I'm getting there. Okay, then these little rosebuds, um, I mean, I don't know. I could add more rosebuds. I could put another one right there. Oop. 
get my gloves caught because they're all sticky now. Okay. I think I hate not to use all the glass that came with the kit, but I think that looks pretty good the way it is. Maybe without that one. Maybe these two need to switch up a little. There we go. I think I like that better. Old fashioned roses, that's what they're called. Okay. Move this glass out of the way, and I'm going to get out my green glass. So, you'll have a packet of green like this, and you'll have little bitty pieces along with some big pieces. These little pieces are for these stems with the multiple little leaves coming off of them. And you can use tweezers if you need to, which I'll probably do, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it with my bare hand because I can't do that. Okay, so I'm going to lay these pieces down on here. Like that. My glove is sticky from pouring resin on the other one, and so it won't let go of glass. <laughs> I'm just kind of laying these down, but you don't have to line them up. You can. You can mix up the color. You can do whatever you want to do. But I did include these because I thought these are fun little accent pieces, you know. Maybe on this one I'll just go down one side. I won't do both sides. It'll look like it's turned a little bit. You can make this your own in so many ways. Add in these, and you can come off the board with your glass too if you want to. You don't have to, you know, keep it on the board, but um, you can pile it up. You can do however you want to. Let's see, I'll go this way. Love this one, that's kind of fun and funky, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know if I need all those. Put some of these little ones down in here in these crevices. I I like that. Maybe I do. Maybe it just needs to overlap over that one. There we go. Okay. So, <laughs> well, thank you, Joan. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Lana. Okay. I'm done with the gloves. Sorry. Sorry to all the people that are watching this, but <laughs> okay. So now I've got this little package of sprinkles and I'm just going to kind of fill in over here with those and just around these areas. You don't have to cover your whole board with, with these, but, um, or with glass or sprinkles or whatever. But I just like the compact look of it. Um, I love these little mirrored pieces, the way they catch the light. I don't know if you can see those or not. Love these mirrored pieces. Um, hmm. No sound. Can everybody else hear me? I hope so. Okay. Way this is looking. What do y'all think? <laughs> the Bob Ross of glass. Okay. All right. Good. You can hear me. And you could turn these either way that go, you know, this direction, of course. Any way you want it to go. All right, so all that's left is to open that little packet that comes with the resin, massage it for three minutes to mix it all together, at least three minutes, set a timer, no less, and then drizzle over the top of it. Okay, good, y'all can hear me. All right, so we've made two roses and the pineapple, 
And then I need to make my third red rose. If you can't stick with me, it's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna set this over here while I work on the red rose. I have to have all these samples anyway, so I thought I'll just do them on a live and that way everybody can see them. Okay, so this one, I wanna use the rough side again. Paint with some white. All of the elements come in the kit. Everything that you need to make these come in the kit. Everything except for a plastic tablecloth or a plastic trash bag of some kind, something something to cover your work, work surface. Um, everything else comes with the kit. Your gloves, your paint brushes, your paint, everything you need. You could, you could take these to the beach with you if you're going on vacation for a rainy day project. You could take these anywhere. Everything that you need is in it. Okay, so I like to use the rough side, like I said. This one's rougher than the others, and I like that. I like it when it's really rough. And I like to paint it, you know, kind of loosely, but you know, in the end, it's not, it doesn't show up that much, but I don't usually like to paint it solid, but some people do. I'm gonna paint my sides here. How do you order? They will be available tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. on my website. So I'll post a link um, here on my Facebook page. And if you're on my email list, you'll get an email tonight with a link to order. So um, they will be available at nine o'clock in the morning. I'm so excited to share these with you all. I have been waiting since Christmas to do more kits. I can't even tell you how much I love making kits. I love making kits and I love, um, I love opening a kit. <laughs> well, there's just something about having everything in one place that I love. I'm gonna sweep some of this out of the way here, maybe, maybe not. Put it with my little broom. Oh, here it is. My little broom. Get, clean up my workspace here. Okay. Yep, yeah, and free shipping in the U.S. Can't do international, but free shipping in the U.S. Okay, so now I have my red paint nice bright brilliant red and you're going to use the top of your glass so one of these little guys comes with your uh, kit and you'll use the top of that to squirt a little paint in it so you can mix up a nice red tone or you can use your red tone sorry i don't know what i'm saying anymore and i'm going to kind of get a lot of this out of my brush because I don't want these red roses to turn pink. I want them to be red. I'm gonna, again, kind of draw some concentric circles with my paint. And I'll have another rose. You'll have enough to make three roses out of your uh, kit. Three roses and some rosebuds. Okay. I don't have any, do I have succulent kits? I don't have any succulent kits, unfortunately. That would be fun, but I had a um, poll and asked people what they wanted about a month ago. And this was what was voted by popular demand. I give the people what they want. <laughs> well, thank you, Shelby. I think, um, I think I'll have some people that'll want to order all of them for sure. Most people have their favorite color of rose though. I think it's kind of funny. Some people are like, oh, I love yellow roses. Yellow roses are my favorite, you know. 
and then other people love pink ones so okay so I'm gonna take my green paint I put I just put green paint on the other side of this little plastic lid and I'm gonna do some um, leaves some foliage out here I wanted I love doing the ones that have um, these little pieces coming off of them like this I didn't leave too much room for them like that did I Not on this one. Okay. Now I'm going to dump out my red glass. Again, the roses, it comes in two bags because there was so much glass to include. And let's see. Dump them out. Oh, you just found me, Stacy. Well, thank you. Thank you all. If you all could sprinkle this to other friends, I don't know how you found me, but a lot of times when you click that button, that little arrow button, to put this out into the interweb, out into the world, that's how people find us, and we appreciate it so much. All of us makers online, we appreciate that. That's better exposure than we could get anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to take the smaller pieces and put those on the inside. Now, I want to tell you something kind of neat. I could, even though I've already painted this, doesn't matter. I could make my center over here, and then it's going to look like my rose is looking that direction. I could put the center over here, and it's going to look like the rose is looking this direction. So you can be cognizant of that. The ones that I've made so far, the centers have been in the middle, so it looks like the roses are pointing straight at us. But we can tilt this and make it, let's just do that. Let's just make it so the so that it's pointing this direction, looking that way. And we'll do this one going this way. So you just want to put your center off center, and that's how you get that um, illusion. That's how you make that look that way. I'm just going to hook these circles together. Hook them together like this, okay? Y'all pretend I have gloves on, okay? I had to ditch the gloves. They were just in my way. Okay, we're just going to keep going around here like this. I'm using all my smallest pieces for this center and then I'm going to get bigger as I go out. And when I say smallest, I mean the ones with the sharpest curve. See, this one doesn't have as sharp a curve as um, this one does. See that? See the difference there? Hi, Bonnie. Okay, so we're going to keep going with these around here. Circle, circle, circle. You know, I may move that and put that back this way and just let the, see how it's looking that direction because I put the center up here in the corner. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Lana. I love them all too. I think my audience had such a great vision for what they wanted. So glad I listened to them because I, roses would not have even been on my radar had they not um, requested it as a kit. So, um, you know, the people know best. The people know best. They know what they want. And if I follow what people are asking for, <laughs> I'm always happy with it. Not only does it, of course, sell better, but I'm always happy with it. Everybody knows what they like best, and it seems like it just always works out. Okay. I keep hooking around here. Get all of our centers done. Let's see. I feel like maybe right here. so easy just to kind of play with these and play some and again I want you to make this your own if you have like a earring that's got a little ladybug on it wouldn't that be cute or a bumblebee if you have a um, some kind of piece of glass that you inherited that was a charm or I don't know anything tea a broken teacup 
piece. I mean, you could fit just about anything into this style of art. What do y'all think? Hi, Stacy and Melissa. The pink is your favorite, is it really? Well, I'm starting to really dig this red. Every time I do one, I'm like, oh, I love this one. Oh, I love that one. So I'm glad. I hope everybody has a different favorite. That way I don't run out of one color and have a ton of another one. <laughs> so if y'all could do that for me, everybody pick a different favorite, okay? <laughs> Just per request. Okay. So I'm going to do some smaller ones up here. And then I'm going to use these, some of these little pieces for um, rosebuds here. And I don't have to cover all of my rosebuds with a piece of glass, but if I can come through here and do a couple of them. Like that. What do y'all think? Okay, so now I'm going to dump out my green glass. I think I have another packet of green up here. Oh. Maybe I don't. Nope, let me grab one. Talk amongst yourselves. Let's see. There's another packet of green. And I'm going to dump this out. See what I've got to work with. Like I said, they're all going to be different, so you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> That's how it works in the world of glass. So that's a really cool piece. Look at that. I'm gonna stick that down in there. I have all of these little pieces again. I've included these in everybody's kits. So you, in all the kits, so you can um, place these along a stem if you want to, but you don't have to use them if you don't want to. That's up to you. How do I store my what? My unused cut pieces. I have my glass sorted by color in bins. So I have two different ways I store my glass. I have it by color in plastic drawers um, up here in my studio. And then down in my garage studio, I have it sorted by, um, by color, but in great big, large bins. So, um, kind of have a couple of different options. Oh, I like the way that looks. Let's see. I kind of like these little pieces here. Kind of fun to scatter around. Is that, was that, did that answer your question? Okay. So then I also have these. Remember these come with every kit. I'm going to dump some of these out of my hand and sprinkle these in around in here. This is just a fun little mix of green pebbles, some mirrored glass, and then um, these clear, the clear glass. I'm liking the way this one's coming together. I had one little piece get stuck down in there. There we go. Okay, you can always take a picture of it from above. You can um, do all kinds of stuff. You need nippers? Oh, do you, Stacy? Well, all of these uh, in the kits, everything comes pre-cut. So you don't have to cut anything for the kits. But if you're planning on making your own artwork, um, definitely you will need nippers. Now, also opening tomorrow is my Glass Collage Makers course. And that course is an eight week intensive course that covers everything for making glass collage art from start to finish. It's, um, it's an eight week course that, um, you know, you could even open your own business afterwards. It teaches you everything. So that opens tomorrow as well. That's a completely different thing than these makers kits. So um, I'll be going live later today talking about the course that opens tomorrow. So, um, all right. So we have three different types of roses. We have a pineapple and then we have a rainbow kit. 
and I didn't have enough extra of the rainbow kit to make a sample, but there's a picture of it on my Facebook page. So if you're looking for what the rainbow kit looks like, but here we go. I think this red one is my favorite. So this is the red rose. This is the pink rose. And then the yellow rose is already poured, so I can't pull it over here to show you. And then we have the pineapple. So those will be live tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and they'll be $49 with free shipping and everything that you need comes in the box. So um, anyway, I will be sending out an email later today, probably tonight with the link in it. So if you're not on my email list, head over to my website, elizabethrhodesstudio.com and get on my email list and you'll be getting an email tonight. All right, thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you all have a great day and um, we'll see you soon. Bye.